am I the bad guy for choosing to go to a concert instead of going to my sister's wedding? I have two half-sisters, Rachel and Regina. Rachel and I have the same mom, while Regina and I have the same dad. I grew up with Rachel, so for many years I was closer to her. As opposite to the sister, I wasn't even aware of until I was five. Didn't mean until I was seven, and only so during the occasional spring break, summer, when our paternal grandmother will have us. It wasn't until I was in high school that I grew closer to Regina. She helped me through something she also experienced. While Rachel thought it wasn't a big deal and eventually told me to get over it. We eventually, Rachel and I, patched things up. But our relationship was never the same. Especially since she never gave me apology, I feel like I was owned for trying to invalidate my feelings. I started hanging around Regina more and due to this, she and Rachel will occasionally cross paths. Regina used to date Jackson and he cheated on her with Rachel. There was a huge blowout and thankfully Regina believed me and over time we were back in good terms. I just couldn't believe that Rachel will be this type of person, and I call her out about it several times. I accused her of not having the best morals, which prompted her to reveal that if it weren't for people like her and Jackson, I wouldn't exist. I was confused about what she meant, and that's when our mom admitted that my dad was still technically with Regina's mom when she started a relationship with him. I was floored, but I did shut up. A few weeks later, invitations for Jackson and Rachel's wedding were sent out, and I didn't get one. I can admit that while a part of me was hurt and not getting an invite, another part of me wasn't sure I would attend. Opted to just not say any. Ignored any in-person conversations about Rachel's wedding around me, and unfollowed unfriended Rachel when the timeline became floated with wedding-related stuff. A few months ago, tickets went on sale for a very popular artist and asked me if I was interested. We got some amazing seats and planned to drive out together over the weekend for the concert. This is the same weekend as Rachel's wedding, and after Regina made a post about it, Rachel immediately called me up and berated me for choosing to go to a concert instead of her wedding. I reminded her that I never got invited to Rachel made a big show about giving me one. And now, members of the family are telling me that I have to attend my only sister's wedding. However, the way I see is that Rachel either didn't want me there until she knew I was going to do something with Regina or was waiting for me to beg and cry for invitation. Either way, Rachel spent the better part of year planning a wedding and is only now inviting me a few weeks prior. So, am I the bad guy here? And yeah, several relatives knew that I wasn't invited and a few of them did go to Rachel about this. And from what I heard, the reason why she didn't initially invite me was because I was so open about my dislike for the groom. Which is one of the reasons why I think she was waiting for me to come to her begging. Regina blocked Rachel on everything two years ago, so I don't know how she found out as quickly as she did. Like, Rachel called me within a couple hours. I'm at the beggar for not spending the weekend with my family because there is going to be a child present. I have been raised by my grandma since I was one and we lived next to my aunt and uncle who had a farm. By the time I was around eight, my aunt had two kids. I started to get shipped off to her house a lot and was expected to babysit all day while they worked on the farm. I made my cousins food, fed them, playing all day with them, bathed them, changed their dirty diapers, put them to bed and I was also cleaning the whole house. Sometimes, if my aunt and uncle come home and I didn't clean, they would make me feel guilty for it. They would sometimes bring me along to activities with their family and buy me clothes. Grandma was poor and would use that to make me feel bad about not doing chores. My cousins were the worst sometimes. Their parents were always fighting and also yelling at them. 
just overall being toxic and not meeting their basis emotional needs. So they were difficult to deal with. They also came a lot to my house and they were always up my ass. I couldn't sleep alone. They were fighting to sleep in my bed or sit next to me at the dinner table or they would have a tantrum if I wouldn't take a bath with them. If I complained or say no, my grandmother and my aunt would just berate me until I said yes. I just like I have no power over myself. Anywhere we go in like restaurants or family functions, I was expected to take care of them or any kids present. I was basically a built-in nanny and maid. Anyways, I move out at 17 to a city a couple of hours away from my hometown. I don't talk a lot to my family and they don't talk to me as well. I started to have a relationship again with my grandmother and for the most part it's going well. It all leads out to this weekend. I was expecting to spend my time off with her and my grand aunt. But then she told me that a 7 years old girl, my grand aunt's granddaughter, was going to be there and that she was so excited to spend time with me. Ask why and my grandma said, well, because me and you, great aunt, are all ladies. It's going to be nice for a little girl to have someone closer to her age. You're all, what can I possibly have in common with a seven-year-old? So I had a panic attack. I feel like I was expected to internal a child yet again because I was always automatically expected to before. I told my grandmother I wasn't coming anymore because I was so anxious and she tried to get me to come anyways, but it was too late. The whole thing was spoiled for me. My grandma sounded sad and we haven't talked since. I'm waiting for the other show to drop. I feel bad because she's getting old and I should be spending more time with her. But my mental health is precarious and I'm just always on my guard with her and the rest of my family. So, am I the bad guy here? Am I the bad guy for telling off my best friend after she used my boyfriend to make another guy jealous? So, the story goes like this. This girl and I have been best friends for the past three years. We met at my first job that I had in this new city I moved to. At first it was great, not so long after we met, I mentioned that I have a boyfriend and told her a little about him, his career, age, etc. Then I showed her a picture of him, like a proud girlfriend low-key wanting to show off her boyfriend, as expected, and she immediately said, oh damn, he's cute, and proceeded to ask me a little bit more about him, but not much, and I thought that was it. Fast forward to the first time she met him. We all went to dinner about a month after our first meeting at work. It was the first time she met my boyfriend in person. Throughout the dinner, she mainly spoke to him and only a little to me. As time went on, I didn't think too much about it. I just thought they were friends and that was it. She asked for his number one day and I didn't think twice about giving it to her since she was my best friend. She began texting him every so often, just saying hello to ask him to hang out with me. My boyfriend, being a polite southern boy, didn't really reply back too often because he was working. When asked to hang out with me, he would politely decline and tell me immediately. He said, it never feels right when she asks me to hang out with you. Isn't it she supposed to be your friend first? Keep in mind, she never told me or brought up in conversation that she asked my boyfriend to hang out with her alone. He always told me first and right when it happened or right when he called if he was at work. A few months later, she started asking about him. When she would ask me to dinner, she always asked if he was coming or if he was at work. If I told her that he was working or busy, she would offer to go to his workplace and wait until he got off so he could go with us. Then, when we will go to dinner together, she would always hug him first before she looked at me. She did this every time we arrived and depart. After that, it advanced so she would make him tell her that he loved her. As it sees him in saying, oh, he doesn't love me, just to make him say that he loved her. He came to me several times saying that it made him uncomfortable and that it was weird that she always made an emphasis to make him say that he loved her. One day, we invited her over to eat brunch with us. My boyfriend is a chief and loves to cook. He was cooking us brunch 
When she called me to talk about one of her topics she loved to deep dive into about herself. Thinking nothing of it, we invite her over to eat. After all, we had more than enough food, and she's a friend, right? As usual, he was her first target upon her arrival. He always showed PDA between us, around her, but ever since, she started focusing more on him. He started to make it a point of every time we hung out. Not in an overbearing way, but subtle enough to take the hint. After getting her food, she was talking about this guy she was snapchatting, who was a long-time friend that she likes. As we were talking, I take our dishes to the sink and start gathering things to begin the cleanup of the kitchen. I proceed to look over my shoulder and she's all over my boyfriend, phone in hand and recording it all on Snapchat with this guy. She was hanging on him and again made him say he loved her. She almost went as far as sitting in his lap. I was furious and I couldn't speak. He was consistently trying to get away from her and mentioning my name and trying to insert me in the conversation as much as possible. She ended the video and said, ha, huh, I bet that will make him jealous. Finally, able to get away from her, he comes back over to me and wraps me in his arms. No doubt he saw the complete rage in my facial expression. She informs us of the guy's reply and it's beaming with victory. As she can tell, it did the trick. My boyfriend insists and continues to bring up, hey, why you don't you send a picture or video of me and together? Then he wouldn't be as jealous. She completely disregarded his statement as if he never said them. She finally leaves and my boyfriend and I talk about what the hell happened. He's just as stunned as I am. Three days later, she asked me to dinner as if nothing happened. And at this point, I've had it. So I waste my feelings. Like her. Dinner tonight? Me. No. Oh, you busy? Nope. I just don't want to go to dinner with a friend who used my boyfriend as bait to make other guys jealous. In my own house, in front of me, no less. That wasn't my intention. I'm sorry if you took it that way. You said out loud, this will make him jealous. And my boyfriend made several statements about telling the guy the truth and sending him pictures of us together, but you acted like he never spoke. Oh, uh, yeah. Needless to say, we didn't speak after that. So, am I the bad guy of being mad? Did I overreact? Am I the bad guy for making my housemates homeless on little notice? I have been living with two guys for the past three years. We get along for most parts. Only she has been cleaning. Renting market is insane here. Not a lot available and what's there is priced insanely. Sounds like A. A lot of international students live here whose parents can't afford to pay. B. A lot of tech and mad companies renting for corporate needs. Over the years I have tried addressing issue with cleaning numerous times. I'm not LCD but I do want the house to be clean. Both of them just don't clean. They would wash their dirty plates and would consider that effort and them keeping the house clean. We all share a bathroom and unless I clean it, it doesn't get touched. I tried leaving it dirty but would eventually give in because I simply can't live in dirt. I tried shaming them when their families will come over and question why the house is such a mess tried hiring a cleaner and billing them, bill the landlord for two, three of the bill. She said, if we can keep the house clean, she will kick us out. Also got called bad guy by housemates for involving her. List goes on. Since beginning of January, I have been trying to find a place to rent by myself with no luck. Recently, I've been getting sick with breathing problems and I'm 100% sure it has to do with the state of the house. So I decided to move back home, different country, since I couldn't find anything else. I talked to my boss explain the situation and that is simply something I have to do for my health. She asked if they would rent me apartment. I paid towards it. Whatever my rent is now and they cover the rest, will I say? And I said, yes, of course. They rented me apartment. I was in 1st of June. I told my landlord beginning of May and gave my one month notice. 
She then gave the boys until 1st of June to move out. I've been called pitsy, bad guy, all because I can't put while little cleaning. Most people agree that I'm right to move, but quite few said I'm a bad guy for not having them more notice, when I know it is impossible to find another place within a month. I know I'm not the bad guy for moving out, but I thought I might for only giving them a month. If I didn't change my lease to month to month, I will be required to give minimum of 90 days. When my company offered me a place and asked how soon do I want it, I could have said in 2-3 months. If I wasn't fed up with the state of the house, I would have given them 3 plus months notice. Like same if I was moving in with a partner. So, am I the bad guy here? Am I the bad guy for overreacting over a harmless mosquito prank? I'm terrified of mosquitoes. I hate them. Don't want to be anywhere near them. I was with a group of my friends recently when Ned decided to play the prank of me. He kept telling me there is a mosquito near me and I started panicking on instinct. He stopped pretty soon because I think seeing my scream and panic scared him. But then he said it was a harmless prank because who is so scared of mosquitoes? You can just crush them. It doesn't make sense to him. It was all in good fun. I had a few choice words for him. How could you and bad guy being me on them? Which means dengue and malaria exists. When I was 10, I got both simultaneously. When I was 10, I got both simultaneously. Yes, you can get dengue and malaria at the same time. I almost died. My parents were told on multiple occasions to prepare for the worst. That was so traumatic for me that even at 21, I'm terrified of mosquitoes. I will cry and panic if you tell me there is one near me and I can't see it, get rid of it. Well, Nate didn't know all of this extra information. He just knew I'm terrified of mosquitoes. He says he wish I told him all of this before because he wouldn't have done it if he knew. I'm of the opinion a friend or even a decent person will need to know why you're scared of something in order to deem that fear acceptable. My friend group is split. Some of them are on my side and other things I should cut him some slack because mosquitoes are a niche fear. I'm at the bag for expecting my boyfriend to pay rent if he moves in with me. This is too dozy. I've been dating Josh for a year. I should say now that I don't ever want to be illegally married and Josh is divorced and doesn't want to remarry. We also live in a place where there is no common law marriage. Still, we want to take things a bit further and we are talking about Josh and his two daughters moving with me. I own a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house in a nice area. Josh rents a two-bed, one-bath apartment and his lease is coming up. My mortgage is 1k a month and Josh's rent is 1.4k a month. It was important to me that we will have everything figured out before making the change so that there will be no surprises or disagreements about who pays what. I figured it out will be unreasonable for Josh to expect to just live with me for free, especially since I'll be giving up one of my rooms so his daughters could have a room. I suggested that Josh pay 700 bucks a month to me in rent half of what he is currently paying. I will cover the cost of any home repairs, internet, garbage, etc. Then we will split utilities, even though there is three of them and one of me. I mean, I don't mind splitting since that will be about what I'm currently paying I predict. And since I mean prepare once a week, I will just get my own groceries and he could get theirs. When I laid everything out, Josh was very unhappy and said since it's my house, he shouldn't have to pay rent and that we should split groceries. I told him he was welcome to buy his own house and I would move in with him and happily pay rent while renting out my own house. He was mad at me because he said he's not in a position where we can buy a house. 
We can come to an agreement. So I suggested he just find another apartment. The owners are letting him renew, and we could revisit the topic in a year. He's not happy with that either because rent prices have skyrocketed here, and two bedroom now go for around 1.8k a month. And he thinks he wouldn't be able to find a place he can afford. I'm a bit frustrated because I feel like 700 a month is a really good deal compared to the likely 1.8 dollars he will have to pay. Since we aren't going to get married or anything, I don't understand why he thinks I will be okay with him living for free with two kids. So I'm not the bad guy for expecting my boyfriend to pay rent.